We have an update from one of our sponsors, the Vegas Near Me app. They are constantly working to add more information. We tell you that all the time. The app is free. We also tell you that. But gosh, when we get these updates, it really is incredible how much information is inside. Yeah, Vegas Near Me has recently partnered with Vegas.com to get you the best prices on show tickets. In fact, they have over a thousand shows listed inside the app. And also, we know sometimes you need a quick break or a familiar go-to when you're in Las Vegas. And they do have more than 1,400 chain restaurants and stores listed in there. They have more than 8,000 individual locations, so you can find them. We're talking Walgreens, Starbucks, you know, fast food, you name it. And we all love to save money, don't we? Well, Vegas Near Me is going to help with that, too. Right now, they're offering 50% off of shows at Jimmy Kimmel's Comedy Club, Plus, a $99 bottle package at Crazy Horse 3 for up to four people, including transportation. Yeah, that's a good deal. And there's lots of other deals in there, too. So get in and look around. Vegas Near Me is free. You don't have to put in your email. Download it in the Google or Apple App Store. Hours, locations, even the length of shows are in there. It's really good. You can even find live music, kid-friendly activities, maps of inside the hotels and casinos. It really is a lot of information in your hand. It is Vegas near me. Download it today. It's episode 219 of Vegas Revealed. Travis and Taylor return to Las Vegas. The Swifties had questions and we answer them this week. Sure do. Plus, DJ John Summit is a music festival favorite and now he's a Vegas headliner. We talked to the young talent about his gig at Fountain Blue. Plus, a free way to experience Dead & Company during the group's residency at the Sphere. Another production show on the Strip is closing, while another longtime headliner lands a new home. It's all this week on Vegas Revealed. Vegas Revealed, presented by Level Up Law, starts now. Welcome to Vegas Revealed, episode 219. Dana Roselli and Sean McAllister here. And you know, Sean, as we just read that open, I was thinking I added a the in front of the sphere when I read it. Yeah. And like, is that, that's like a no-no, right? It's sphere. Well, it's officially for branding purposes. If you're (laughs) working for the Madison Square Garden Company or you're working for sphere, the technical, technically the correct way to say it is sphere. No the, no whatever, just Sphere. I think the Bellagio is the same. It's Bellagio. Yeah. Not the Bellagio, Las Vegas. But it's like, I feel like there needs to be (laughs) some kind of a a setup word in front of it, though. (laughs) You know what I mean? Yeah, I feel like it's more like in the the structure of the sentence, we throw in the the. (laughs) Right. (laughs) But if I were to say, hey, I'm thinking of going to the Bellagio today, I'm not going to be like, hey, I'm thinking of going... To Bellagio today. I know that is the right way to say it, though. Uh, Right. (laughs) But you know what? If I hear it, I'm not going to listen and be like, oh, you were just marketingly incorrect or brandingly incorrect. I know. I feel like as long as the spelling is right, then it's okay. Yeah. Well, as long as we're talking about it, it's getting out there, right? Exactly. The or not. (laughs) So is it is it Tay and Trav or is it Taylor and Travis? Oh, or is what it Heather? Travis and Taylor? Tra- Traver? Is that what they've been called? <laughs> Something like Trailer? that. Trailer? Yeah, no. We're talking about <laughs> Taylor Swift, if you know who she is, and Travis Kelsey, who were also back in town in Las Vegas uh, just this past weekend, and it created quite a buzz. And I know it's like, you know, all right, enough Taylor Swift, enough Travis Kelsey, but <laughs> say what you will, it creates conversation. Well, and it creates a, a ton of buzz, too. I mean, almost instantly, once from the time Taylor's plane touched down in Las Vegas, there were all these like alerts going out on social media. Oh, Taylor's plane just touched down. She must be going to this big charity event that that Travis is doing here. Yeah, Patrick Mahomes, a quarterback for the Kansas City Chiefs, was in town hosting his charity golf tournament. And there were a bunch of things that happened around that, including some different events, a gala, an auction, and then the tournament. Well, and once again... Uh, Vegas revealed social media was all over it. <laughs> I I was out on the strip having 
cocktails for my husband's birthday and I saw all this stuff popping up and I, I sent you a text. I was like, Roselli, what's going on? Where's all this Taylor stuff coming from? I know. Well, I was thinking about it during the day when I saw her jet touchdown because, you know, people track her private jet. That's how yeah. everyone knew she was here, which it's got to be frustrating for her, but whatever. I mean, uh, it's publicity and she's a billionaire. So um, anyway, um, I was like, oh, let me look around when I got home that night because I had like a long day out and stuff. And I was like, let me see if anyone's with Taylor. And so I started, you know, looking up what the Swifties were up to. And um, they had found an Insta story from this woman that was there. And so I went and tracked her down on Instagram and I started watching all her stories as she was putting them up on Instagram. And then I was like, oh my God, I saw the one where Travis called Taylor his significant other. And I was like, Oh, I got to post this from Vegas revealed. And so that's how it all happened. And then, <laughs> and now it's on our YouTube shorts and going crazy and TikTok. The reason we're even talking about this is uh, it's great. You know, a lot of buzz when they're in town and, and it's a big deal, but it is funny because that video created all these questions on our Vegas revealed TikTok, And I thought some of them were funny and we've got to answer them because they're Vegas related. And let me tell you, Dana Roselli has been on a Taylor Swift kick ever since this new music came out. Yep. Just about just about every time we talk, there's yep. some sort of reference back to one of those songs. Yes. And I love it. I'm I'm kind of hooked on this music now too. Yeah, it's good. It really is. The new album's amazing. I loved Midnights when that came out. And then I went to see her at Allegiant Stadium. And that's where I really got hooked because the power of a live concert, she put on a show, the energy in there. So I have just been into it. Talk Let's get to these Taylor questions. Yes, I know. I was trying to get there and then you're the one who brought up I the know. other stuff. And I now sidetracked I'm sidetracked. Us. Okay. Well, listen, somebody said, why was the auction so vibrant? Because there's an auction and they've got the towels in the air and they're trying to get everyone to up the bid um, for the, the Taylor Swift Eras Tour uh, tickets. So, um, and the person said, like, I thought, you know, auctions were like chill and proper and like, you know, holding your little sign up and all this. And, and basically the answer to that is no, not in Vegas. No. Um, our auctions, we have gala after gala after auction after auction, great events here in Vegas. Our auctions are fun, they're vibrant, and the whole crowd gets into it. It is. We just were at a, a auction for a separate charity event, and an audience member got up and got on the mic and started like yep. taunting the rest of the audience members to start bidding. Yeah, it's crazy, right? And it's fun. And there's music, and there's a live auctioneer, and it's the whole thing. Um, and then someone else asked, why are they having the charity golf tournament in Vegas and not in Kansas City? And there could be a number of reasons why, but I answered because our golf courses are probably better because <laughs> we have some amazing <laughs> golf courses here. And I don't know if a lot of people know that, but we have some stunning courses. Well, and the one that they uh, were playing at is the private course that's owned by MGM. Yeah, it's great. So, it, and it's beautiful. It is. When I used to be a reporter in the helicopter for channel eight, um, we'd always fly over it. Well, and aside from the golf course, I have a feeling that Patrick Mahomes and like just likes Vegas. I think likes Vegas. After yeah. they won Super Bowl and you know, mm -hmm. were out on the town. Right. Or made a contact who said, Hey, have the tournament here. Exactly. Or or they figured, you know what, we're always doing stuff in Kansas City. Let's give let's entice people to come and bid and give money, play in the tournament, come to the gala. Maybe if we make it more of a destination type charity tournament, then you know, a lot of people will come. Right. But um, the, where they had the gala, that was under wraps. Even if you went to the the website, because um, I did my research, um, you it didn't tell you where it was. You had to click and buy tickets, and then it probably revealed where it was. So that was another question. Where did the gala take place? And so I did a little reverse Google image search <laughs> and took a screenshot of the carpet, and it was very easy. Bellagio. <laughs> Not the Bellagio. 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 Um, well, that's what I took from it. Not confirmed. My matching skills could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure they're right. <laughs> but it does make sense because I think it was even the night before um, Travis and Taylor and Brittany and Patrick Mahomes were went to the Proper Eats food hall where there's a speakeasy mm -hmm. and they hung out there. And that's kind of like that's over at Aria. And there's a bridge now that connects Aria to Bellagio. Right. 
So yeah, maybe so they're makes all in the vicinity. That they were just kind of hanging there. Yeah. And Bellagio is an MGM property, just like Aria. Exactly. And the golf course is owned by MGM. <laughs> Look at all these dots being I know, connected. I know. All right. Well, let's move on from that. That was fun though. Um, you know, it creates buzz and whenever we have like A-listers in town, it's just more advertisement for Vegas and we like that. Let's switch gears and talk about Formula One. The race is coming up again in mid-November here in Las Vegas. And even though it seems like it's kind of far off, it's really not. And there's little tidbits of information starting to come out about the race, uh, including the fact that Fountain Blue has been announced as an official partner of the Formula One Las Vegas Grand Prix. And they're building a nightclub on top of the garage building Mm -hmm. at F1 headquarters. I know. Live Las Vegas will be up there. (laughs) Jeez. I know. It's so cool. And, you know, Fountain Blue wasn't open for the last Grand Prix, right? No, No. it wasn't. It was just before Fountain Blue opened. Yeah, so this is cool that they're now in on the game and luxury. You know, F1 is very luxurious, and so it's a perfect match, I think. They say they're going to have A-list entertainment there and that all of the people that are you know, at the paddock club, we'll be able to, you know, dance the night away, get table service, all that kind of thing. And so the um, details for all that coming out, but Fountain Blue also announced they're going to have a shuttle stop for ticketed live and paddock club guests as well. So, I mean, that's going to be just taking that F1 experience to the next level, literally the next level. Yeah. Because there was nothing up on the roof last I time. I know. I don't <laughs> it know. It is a What's new there? level. Okay. Uh, so... Yeah, that's great for Fountain Blue um, that they're going to have that club there. Speaking of Fountain Blue clubs, uh, John Summit, he has been an absolute hit on the music festival scene. Uh, He's also a headliner at Live Nightclub and Live Beach Club over at Fountain Blue. Right. We actually chatted with him about landing the Fountain Blue as a regular DJ at the hotel's opening in December. And I don't think we really played that interview. So um, since there's a lot of buzz about him and he's going to be playing EDC here in Las Vegas coming up, we thought, let's roll that interview. What are you going to bring to Vegas nightlife that isn't already here? What vibe? I think energy and new music, you know, because I'm kind of the new wave of DJs right now. And I think the city needed something new and exciting. So I hope to be bringing that. I, I think you're right. I mean, we, we are known for great DJs. But, yeah, you know, yeah. I love that, that you are something new. So explain to people, if they come to you, the nightclub, yeah. what, what they're going to get from you. You're going to get some real house music. I come from Chicago, the home of house. But then also new music and, you know, really putting on a new show for everybody. I mean, because people always wonder, is it get EDM? Are we going to yeah. hear a mix of hip-hop? So, what are we going to hear? A mixture of, you know, my own hits and some of the hits people are familiar with, but new music because I kind of want to open people's ears to new stuff. And you know? what opportunity does it bring you to have the global base that Vegas draws in coming to your shows here at Fountain Blue? It's incredible because that opens me to brand new audiences, you know, and someone that's trying to tour the world. You know, I just did Asia for a month, just did a whole summer in Ibiza. I think it's good to have that global appeal here. I think I said this in the TV show, but my friend's daughter, who's like a freshman in college, <laughs> liked my John Summit <laughs> post or photo or whatever it was. Um, and so I was like, wow, okay, now she thinks I'm a big deal because I talked to John Summit. He's a big deal he is to the youngsters. Deal. He is. Yeah. And now you are too. I know, really popular, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, again, he is going to be at EDC as well, May 17th to Sunday, May 19th uh, here in town. You can see John Summit. He's got a full schedule over at Fountain Blue as well. Well, now to a longtime Las Vegas headliner, Terry Fader. He got his start on America's Got Talent, landed a a permanent residency gig uh, here in Las Vegas. He started at the Mirage, then moved to New York, New York. And now he has developed a completely new show and has a new home for that show. Yeah, he's going to be going over to the Strat starting May 23rd. So congratulations to Terry. You know, he started over at the Mirage. Then he was at New York, New York. Now the Strat, you know, a winner, the big, big winner of America's Got Talent when that show was brand new. And so Terry's still here uh, making his home here in Las Vegas, does some touring, but um, also has been headlining here in uh, Vegas on the Strip for such a long time now. Um, I remember when he started and it seemed 
seems like forever ago, but it's more than 10 <laughs> years ago, more than well, close to 15 years ago, I think. Yeah, it's yeah. been a long yeah, time. It's been a long time. So he'll be doing this new show over at the Strat if you'd like to see um, Terry Fader. Great voice. He's a ventriloquist. He's got the funniest songs and parodies and, and puppets and um, his cast of characters, I guess you'd call it. And it, it's just, it's a great show and it's entertaining and it's family friendly. It is. And Terry always does such a great job. There's always new characters popping up in his show as yeah. well. So good for Terry. And last week, um, we talked to Gleb Savchenko, who is the celebrity host in Chippendale. So we did go see the show after that interview. It was a lot of fun. We had a great time. But, Sean, I wanted to talk about real quick. When I was walking into the Chippendales show, uh -huh. I was going over this bridge from the parking garage, and I was with a couple who uh, the woman said she was celebrating her 60th birthday in Vegas. Ooh. They were from Des Moines. And they rented a car, and they had just run out to get some things. They wanted to go to the store, you know, get some things for the room. They sure. were getting ready to go to Penn and Teller later, and they were excited to be here. But, man, they said they were so frustrated with the Vegas drivers. Ugh. And I thought, I have to tell Sean this story. So, I mean, <laughs> um, I felt for them. They were like, boy, it's a jungle out there. And I was like, that's so interesting. I'm like, yeah, you're not in Des Moines anymore. <laughs> no, it's but scary. It is. Yeah, they were like, it was, it was, she's like, man. And she was really like kind of flustered. She was like, it's, you know, it's a battle out there on the roads. And I'm like, I know, especially if you aren't familiar with the city, it can be tough. But they had gone uh, to do that and, and were complaining about that. I felt her pain. And then she said um, that they were staying at the Rio. And I said, how's the room? Are you in a renovated room? And she said, no, we're in a non-renovated room. She goes, but you know what? It's great. Like, we don't, we don't mind it at all. It's nice. So I was glad that they were happy with the Rio after we just did that big interview, you know, with the new owner. Absolutely. That's great to hear. I love the, that people are are hopping over to the Rio and, you know, hopefully this is the beginning of, of the property's comeback. Right. Now, do we want to discuss um, your gripe of the week or do we want to save that for next podcast? Let's save it for okay, the next one. Because it'll be a good topic. Even though it does tie in with the frustration <laughs> that that couple from Des Moines was having with drivers. It, oh. not, it doesn't specifically have to do with drivers. No. We'll put a pin in it. It's okay. about bringing your kids to Vegas. Okay. Yeah, that's next week. That's coming up next coming week. Coming up next on week. On episode 220. <laughs> it'll be a lively one. We wanted to remind you, Vegas Revealed is presented by Level Up Law. Now, you don't have to live in Nevada to get help from Level Up. Do you have a wrongful death case or been in a motor vehicle accident, even harmed in a ride chair? You can call Level Up Law now at 855-LEVEL-UP. If you've experienced a slip and fall, were injured in a place of business or on a construction site, call Level Up Law now. Maybe even property damage, wind resulting in downed trees, wildfires, water damage. The experienced team at Level Up can help you. Go to leveluplaw.com for more information or call them at 855-LEVEL-UP. All right, we are excited to talk travel, Sean, and also talk about a brand new site that I think is going to be really helpful for people. Well, and not only helpful for people who are looking to plan a Las Vegas trip, but also trips across the country and around the world. Dana Manneker is the creator of The Short List. It's good to see you. Uh, great to see you, too, and thank you for having me today. Now, Dana, I get so many phone calls, texts in the middle of an unexpected day saying, hey, I'm coming to Vegas. Can you recommend any spots that nobody knows about or where should I go? And I want to eliminate that. So I feel like the shortlist is going to help with that. Am I right? Send them to the shortlist.com where they will absolutely find the best of the best uh, recommendations um, that are uh, provided to you by locals who are A-listers and truly unbiased, vetted, and trusted. Well, when you say A-lister, so this, t tell us a little bit about how this website works, because um, I love it. It's different than just like if I were to go on and look at a site where, you know, hundreds of people reviewed something and I went off that. Yeah, so A-listers are uh, locals um, that either have been born and raised in a city like Las Vegas or um, have been, been here for a long time and are really living and breathing the recommendations that they're sharing 
uh, with us. And so at the shortlist, we have a very uh, thorough vetting process on bringing on those A-listers, making sure that they really are, if they're recommending nightclubs, let's say, they're out and about, you know, a few nights a week and really living that life, being able to dissect the differences between what a great club is and what is just so-so and not worth going to. Same for call it a uh, someone that is really into dim sum in Chinatown, let's say, right? There's so many restaurants. Mm -hmm. And how do you filter through that? So you have mass review sites like the TripAdvisors and the Yelps, where you have thousands and hundreds of thousands of people reviewing certain places, but you just don't know who they are. You don't necessarily trust them. They may be related to the chef or don't like the chef and then are giving them a really bad review or just people that don't have like-minded tastes like yourselves. Yeah. I agree about the Chinatown thing. It's hard. It looks like there's so many great restaurants, but I don't know which one. It does. But it, I mean, it basically sounds like your A-listers have to be connoisseurs of the recommendations they're providing, not just a casual, a casual bop into a club. The nightlife scene needs to be their thing. Yeah, Sean, that's actually a great way of putting it, a connoisseur. It's um, being um, able to to dissect their recommendations because they're, again, living living the life. They, they have authority, right? They're the type of person that others listen to in a room. They are completely unbiased. They're unpaid by the restaurants. So they're not going to be re or restaurants, hotels, mm -hmm. activities, and so forth. They're not being paid for their recommendation. They're being paid by us as A-listers. Mm -hmm. So that's a huge differentiator. And are a lot of these places places they would go anyway or places they have frequented and already know, like, I've had good service here, their food's good, this is one of my recommendations, go. Yeah, definitely. So they, they have to be going to those places on a regular basis, not because they want to give, provide a recommendation for the shortlist. So that wouldn't really qualify as an A-list or recommendation. Um, it's something that they would be attending. So let's say you're looking at Italian restaurants in Las Vegas and a new one pops up They and, and it's a higher end Italian restaurant. They must have had to go to call it Sinatra and Carbone and all the other ones to really understand what is good Italian food, what is mediocre Italian food and what is just not so good. And one of the good things about um, our um, final recommendations with the shortlist is that we have a vibe meter. So it'll also allow you to identify, let's say you want to go to a place that has a better vibe, but the food is just okay. Mm -hmm. And we feel like it's worth recommending because of the ambiance that you may be looking for. And with the vibe meter, you're getting the indicators of what's top notch on food, but a little less chic. You know, if you're looking for a chic spot, that might not be the place to go to. So, um, yeah. I think we're loving the vibe meter. I, we might need to use that on the podcast. I was just going to say, I didn't know I needed a vibe meter in my life so badly. This is amazing. It is. I love it. Oh my gosh. The vibe meter. This is great. I absolutely love it. And I recognize some of the A-listers that you have on the Vegas site of the shortlist. And I noticed there's also like a, like a real variety Yes, we definitely want to make sure, you know, it's not just for one type of traveler. So as far as the audience for the shortlist is concerned, it's really um, anybody that is looking to get the best of the best experience for the type of category you're looking for. So it could be a connoisseur when it comes to food trucks, right? And just mm -hmm. local, what are the best food trucks in town? What are the best um, hikes in town? If you're coming in for a convention and you have an extra day, but you're really an outdoorsy person, want to steer clear from the nightclub and, and gaming scene, you may want to be able to do some hikes. Like, And so it's for that. It's really for anyone that's looking to search less and experience more. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a, a really good important, the best of the best of whatever category you're looking at. And the best of the best doesn't necessarily mean it's going to cost an arm and a leg. Mm -hmm. um, definitely not. It, it can also be a local farmer's market. It can be um, a park that is just close by and really convenient for, for anybody, let's say, traveling with a family. We also have the Designed by Locals page. So even though it is um, a global travel platform in that sense, it is also an entertainment platform. So there'll be one section that is dedicated just to, to anybody that lives local and they'll have more, more ideas out there and more restaurant recommendations, um, 
local food festivals, uh, little concerts, movies in the park, any kind of activities that we really find uh, will be um, appealing to our audience. Mm -hmm. And you are expanding outside of Las Vegas too. It's not just recommendations for the city we live in and love. Yes, so we are expanding globally. Um, Miami is a short follow to Vegas, so that's in the works of launching. We have major um, travel destinations in the U.S., such as um, San Francisco, Denver, um, L.A., New York, Austin, and so forth, as well as internationally. So we're looking to expand to um, the big cities at first and then taking it from there. And a lot of our listeners, we have listeners from really around the world, and they love to either uh, hear about Vegas, visit Vegas, have hopes of visiting Vegas, or are planning a trip. I mean, why do you recommend um, Vegas in the summertime? Because I know we were chatting about some options, and I think a lot of people think to themselves, ah, they hear the desert, it's so hot in the summer, but we do have a lot of variety of things to do. Yeah, so... Well, first of all, Vegas in the summertime is great because rates are a lot lower um, than what they are throughout the year as there's less conventions um, and events happening around town. Additionally, there's so many different indoor activities. So you have the mall, you have amazing shopping, restaurants, uh, shows, concert venues, and, and so forth that are all indoors, as well as the pool scene. So if you are coming with to party to Vegas, you don't have to stay up all night and go to a nightclub. You can just party during the day at one of the many amazing pool clubs that are out there. And then you also have the child-friendly pools, like the one the, the, the beach at Mandalay Bay, for example, and um, just lots of fun things to do. And Dana, I know you're a big traveler. You have amazing trips that you go on. What is the number one travel tip that you have for people that will make their overall experience go just a little smoother? I would say plan ahead. Um, I definitely uh, think that's a really important factor. I think having um, kind of where we come in also with the shortlist is being able to, once you book a trip, to book the activities and the restaurants around it. Because if you're going to wait to book a restaurant until you arrive at the hotel on your trip and you're dealing with the concierge, you're not going to get into the places that you're going to want to get into. So it's better to over plan and then make some changes as things get closer than to not plan at all and... Um, Try to wing it. Yeah. So do you think when you're planning a trip and planning your dinners, activities, whatever, is it better to almost overbook your trip and then cancel things <laughs> that might not end up fitting in? Mm. Definitely. <laughs> Especially even with restaurants, you know, because you may not know a month out what type of cuisine you feel like, but you want to have options. And if you want a prime time table at 7 p.m. or 7.30 p.m. at a great restaurant, you're not going to be able to get it if it's a week out. So, or let's say you book Chinese on a given night and you're not in the mood for Chinese and you want something different. It's almost impossible to get a reservation the day off. And even though we don't have um, the access component fully rolled out yet, that will be another area of the shortlist that we will be providing for a fee to get that exclusive restaurant access and so forth. Yeah, I love it. I mean, and, and even from way earlier when you brought up the reviews, I just think, you know, I see so many people posting on social media that own restaurants or own, you know, attractions and say, I, I notice we're getting flooded with these reviews that seem off. Something's fishy, you know, and, and it doesn't allow people to take them down or flag them. So, I mean, I think just maybe avoiding it could be the way to go. And this is really going to work well. I mean, for sure. I think that when you look at, you know, the free coffee in exchange for a review or whatnot, it just um, makes it so biased. And you just don't know if someone is reviewing a place because they actually truly believe it or if they're um, getting incentivized to do so. Yeah. Same with, uh, with influencers. So there's a lot of influencers out there that will be recommending and promoting things because they're getting paid or they're getting a free meal. And that's something that we're completely steering clear from is just making sure. So even though we're getting a list of recommendations, once that recommendation comes in, it is heavily vetted by our own internal shortlist team to ensure that it's meeting all the metrics in order for us to put it on the list. Love that. Yeah, I, right. uh, that's that's amazing because I know one of the things that people are talking about now in the influencer world is the disclosure or yeah. lack thereof. Yeah. And you never know, well, is this person getting something 
you know, in exchange for saying this is the best pizza place <laughs> ever in Las Vegas. I know. And you're like, have you been to every pizza place <laughs> or <laughs> exactly? So it's, have you been to every pizza place? I think that, you know, gathering ideas from certain influencers where, you know, they're only recommending brands that they believe in. I think that's different, but it's again, really hard to dissect who are those influencers versus the influencers that are just promoting whatever they can to 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 make a quick buck. So yeah. it's a very different world out there. So <laughs> it is. I love it. It's interesting. Listen, Dana, thank you so much for joining us. If people want to check out the site, it's shortlist.com. No vowels, right? Exactly. No That's vowels. <laughs> yeah, come visit us. And if you don't feel like figuring out what shortlist is without the vowels, <laughs> grab a pen and paper because we're about to give it to you really easy. It's S H R T L S T dot com. All right. Got it. Rewind 10 (laughs) seconds if you need to hear it again. All right. Let's do some tips. Our first tip this week is do not hesitate to go and see America's Got Talent presents Superstars Live. This is the show that's been playing over at the Luxor for several years now. Um, But this is your last chance to see this production because it's closing in about a week. Yeah, the final show is Saturday, May 11th. And so um, it's your last chance, like you said. It's a great show because there's a variety of acts in it, and I think people really enjoyed that. And also it is family-friendly. In fact, we were just chatting with Dana from the shortlist, and she was saying, I love that show because she could bring the kids. And, And so it was a great option over there. And it is closing Saturday, May 11th. You can go to Luxor.com if you want to get tickets to one of the final shows. Get over there and um, enjoy because, you know, things come and go here a lot. And it's sad to see, but it's just kind of what happens. And sometimes if you haven't, you think you're going to have forever to see something. And then if you're like, I've always... Meant to go see that, and you haven't? Well, now you have one week. (laughs) I know. That's happened to me before, and I I regret it, especially with entertainers. Right. Well, and you went to see Love just recently because you heard it was closing July 7th, and you ran over there to make sure that that you saw it again. And I want to go back and see it again. Again? Oh, my (laughs) gosh. All right. Good to know. Hey, um, Dead & Company are coming over to Sphere, and not the Sphere, Sphere, and uh, we've talked about that. They're doing a whole residency over there. They're the next act in the Sphere, and a lot of people are looking forward to that, and we wanted to let you know about something that's happening surrounding that that's free. Yes, I said free, and it's over at the Venetian. Yeah, this is the Dead & Company free experience. It's called Dead Forever Experience. (laughs) Um, This is going to be kind of a hub for all of the the dead fans that come into town. They're going to have merchandise. There's going to be exhibits that kind of go through the the band's history Mm. and their legacy, which is it's going to be a cool thing. If you remember when U2 was here, they had the U2, Zoo, Zoo U2, Zoo... Yeah, something. Experience. (laughs) It was free. (laughs) And that was free too. Yeah. Uh, So this is along those same lines, but it gives fans who are in town to see this show an extra attraction to kind of boost their overall experience. Right. And and if you can't get to the show, maybe you can't afford it or it's not in the works or maybe you arrive in town and you go, I didn't realize they were playing. I didn't get a ticket, but hey, everyone, let's go check out this free exhibit, you know, and then maybe you buy some merch. You yeah. know, or something like that. So that's kind of cool. Um, I love that. And if you're not familiar with Dead & Company, by the way, it's uh, members of the Grateful Dead. And also John Mayer is part of this group as well. Yeah. So um, like you said, there's a lot of history there with the the Grateful Dead. And um, it's over at the Venetian uh, Resort. So it, it's interactive. Like you said, it's 22,000 square feet of exhibit space. So there's a lot to do. Um, and it's across two floors. So it sounds like it'll be good. Yeah. And it's right there off the big, uh, atrium, the waterfall atrium there. Yep. Um, over at the Venetian. Okay. Hey, thanks to our presenting sponsor, level up law. You can call eight, five, five level up. If you need an attorney, they are based out of Arizona, but you don't have to live in Arizona. You don't even have to live in Nevada to experience and take on, uh, get at some of their services. So give them a call, let them, know your situation. It's 855-LEVEL-UP and they'll point you in the right direction and be able to help. 
Also, we want to say thank you to the Vegas Near Me app. We've talked about it for months and months now. It's like a concierge in your pocket. The app is available for iPhones, for Apple devices, and Android devices. Uh, Just go to the respective stores, wherever you get your apps. Get Vegas near me from there. Yeah, and we started this new um, texting service on our podcast. So we enabled it in our pod, uh, like our p- podcast hosting site. Um, and if you go into our show notes, there should be a link right at the top that says text us. And so if you want to, send us a message, send us an idea, send us a question. Feel free, and we'll read them here on the show. Yeah, I can't wait to get our first text. I know. Who's going to be the first text? Well, I tried it out <gasps> already, and it worked. So well, I don't count, though. How about the first listener? <laughs> Yeah. To text us. Well, I listen. You do listen. <laughs> I know. I'm we- just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Who is going to be the first? What will they get? They will get the biggest shout out and we'll, we'll pick a certain track of music just for you. Ooh, How about we, that? We might have some goodies too. Okay. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> well, your husband just got a, what did he get for his birthday? A steel, a steel drum. drum. Yeah. Maybe we get him in here <laughs> for the, the first texter. <laughs> And <laughs> Shane, where's that steel drum? <laughs> he was laughing. I'm like, how can we utilize this? Can you guys use use this in any way? I'm like, well, maybe. Maybe. Maybe sound effects. So anyway, I yeah, we <laughs> I wonder who the first Dexter will be. Let's wrap this show up, baby. I uh, will see you next week for 220.